Well, here it is. Here it is. Beep. Now, I don't want to hear any bull crap about this guitar. It is a Gibson Les Paul Custom Blue Burst. Now, I could either tell you the long convoluted story on how I got this and how hard it was to get and the only reason I got it was because of the flood in 2010 9 10 whatever it was when the literally the uh, Nashville uh, Gibson factory was flooded losses you know millions of dollars in losses blah 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 but that's when they were making ace guitars they were kind of you know tapering off because you know ace wasn't really in the band and they weren't sure because this guitar had been you know he'd always wanted this and <clears throat> he was going to get one and he wanted it made you know but he wasn't in kiss and he wasn't the space guy anymore. He was just Ace Freely. So there was this big thing, you know, where like, you know, well, I don't know if we should put money into it, da 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 But they did start making the Blue Burst with three humbuckers. This is going to be as quick as possible. So I knew a guy, his name was Richard. He used to work for Jackson. I got hold of him. He was working for Gibson now. Now he doesn't work for Gibson. He works back at Fender. I think in the EVH. I think, yeah. So, anyways, Richard or Dick. Well, let's call him Dick. You know, I don't really talk to him anymore. <laughs> but he was a nice guy. He got me this. So, I said, dude, I really want one of those Blue Ace, you know, bursts. He's like, we're having problems, man, because, you know, Gibson doesn't want to do it. And if they do it, it'll be an Epiphone, and they're already doing the, you know, because they built five, you know, how many times I've told you they built five factories in Asia. You know, Indonesia, you know, China, da -da 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 -da, Korea, all these places, five factories Gibson built. That's where they're making all of their guitars. The only ones they're making out there are custom ones or really, you know, you know, short run ones like those ones that they ran over with the bulldozer. Why wouldn't you just give those away? So, anyways, well, just, just kidding. So, I'm like, dude, I really want, I really want one of these. He goes, oh, I can get you a blue burst. I go, no, I want the Ace Freely blue burst. He goes, just, you know, get a Ace sticker and put it on there. I'm like, <laughs> dude, I want it like you know he has he goes you know the only person who's got one like him is him and we're going to make him approximately 100 more now this is what he told me this was in early 2010 because I went out there in uh, I don't know May it was whenever after it was after the flood 2010 I was still a little brrrr from the accident in 2009, so I, but I had a lot of money still, so money was no object. And I kept telling him, money is no object. Please get me one of those guitars, and I want the Ace Freely one. He goes, like, I'll do what I can. He goes, I can absolutely guarantee you a Blue Burst, and I'm like, I go, dude, I want an Ace Freely. I go, is it a Gibson? He goes, yes, of course, a Gibson Custom Blue Burst. Now, the lights are low, otherwise, you know, you could see everything a lot better, but that's not to hide anything. You can see the, the truss rod cover is the one that he's got. Everything is what he has. It's just... <laughs> so he goes, this is the problem. They've got a bunch, they've got several blue ones. I could pick out one, and I could get, you know, I can sell it to you, and it was like five... Five thousand dollars, I think it was four or five thousand. I think it was four, four or something. Because I went and picked it up. So, 
And he goes, you got to come on this day when there's hardly anybody there. And I had my uncle drive me down from uh, his place in Illinois. You know, everything there is, like, really close. Because I'm like, dude, i got to go from, you know, Illinois to Tennessee. That's not that long of a drive. Every, everything is together there. So we got there quick and picked it up. You know, handed it off. And he was, there was only one way I could do this myself and you got you know a blue burst with the ace freely you know on it that you can see it you can see ace freely's there and if you could show and i don't want to get in because it's really not well it is about the guitar but it's about what i made it do and i've got the chromes these pickups are ridiculously expensive because <laughs> any game to me i said just put anything in there put pafs or the Super Distortion is better. He put PAFs. So I got three PAFs in here when I got this. No pick guard. Pick guard wasn't on there. Of course, that's an aftermarket thing. And you'll see why in a second. And he had, uh, you know, black speed knobs on it, I think. Or gold. Or something s stupid. And uh, just handed it to me. And I'm like, what's the difference? He goes, you'll notice... I'm like, oh. I go, I need a case. He goes, okay. And he runs back in, gets me a case. And I got it. I got a nice Gibson USA, you know, case. Really nice. I mean, you can tell the, I guess there's fake ones out there. I don't know. Why would you buy a, buy a fake case? But whatever. So I got that, put it in, boom. Didn't even look at it because it's in the back of my uncle's truck. Get home. I'm playing it. And I'm like, this is cool. Even with, you know, whatever. And I start looking at it, and I'm like, oh. So it took me not that long to figure out how he did it. But he was able to take a Gibson Blue Burst, add what needed to be added, he said, because I got to get a guy to put in this, to put in the signature. Because that, that's, that's there. And it's right how it should be, because you can tell there's some that are just all, but, you know, whatever. You can do your old whatever you want. It's not right. This isn't right, baby. Dude, it is what it is. It's a Gibson Custom Les Paul Blue Burst Ace Freely. And so what they ended up doing was Ace got a couple, his brother got one, his cousin got one, and several, all of his friends that he wanted to give one got one. And that's all they made. Beep! No one else got one. Then they started making the Epiphones, which are just like the other Epiphone ones. The, one, the difference in, uh, is the face. The face on the Epiphones is a decal. They put the decal on, put the clear coat, buff, 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 there you go. With the uh, Ace ones, the Gibson ones, this is uh, Mother of Pearl, where his eye is, and uh, yeah, where his, his makeup is, his eye makeup, is Mother of Pearl, and uh, Looks freaking cool. And that's the big difference. And it's like, really? And, oh, you know, do I really, you know. So, I uh, saw the the uh, ones that were being churned out, the Epiphone Blue Burst. They look like crap. The blue doesn't look right. Nothing looks right to me. I like this one. This is an actual Gibson. I know it. So then I had to bring it home. And then I had to buy the pickups. And then I'm like, well, what is going to make this actually really different from anybody else's? So I'm like thinking, well, his smokes. I don't want to do that. And I'm, and these pickups are badass. You need to highlight the, pi highlight the pickups. So that's what I did. I don't like this friggin' uh, pick guard. I hate it. 
but because the guy that works on my guitar sometimes doesn't listen to what I say, I got a pick guard. He says it's blue. It's cool. It, it matches and everything, and it serves a purpose, which you will see in a minute.
told my guy to do is take a mini toggle put it right here and I can just flick it he didn't think that was a good idea so he did this and put the toggle under the pretty cool though huh there's the back and uh, there you go I mean it is what it is, as they always say. I hate that saying. But that's what it is. Um, okay, the story I was going to tell. So, someone asked me uh, to tell a story about Tony Iommi. I've already told my Tony Iommi story, I thought. I'm like, I only got one. I was with a girl. I was seeing a girl, you know. One of my side girls. And this chick had worked for Jet Records. She'd worked, and she was working at the Rainbow, and that's where I met her. But she was also friends with a friend of mine. Uh, a friend of mine's girlfriend. Well, this guy, he, his friend, and he's all over the internet, and he says a lot of bullshit, and, and it isn't true, and people are starting to catch on to it. And he's actually the reason Sharon got the masters back <laughs> she got control of the masters to the first two albums and three live shows she, that's she's this guy is the reason he called her office up and said if you want the masters to the two first albums and three live recordings this is the address come and get him she showed up with cops his girlfriend was like what the cuz she worked for Don Arden Don Arden paid for everything those were his tapes so he was having her fly that and a bunch of other stuff some checks that were written out to different people some written to Randy Rhodes which this guy copied and then he he's claiming that Randy gave him his pay why would Randy give anybody his checks anybody except maybe his mom but why because they weren't that outstanding really I mean, they weren't that big, you know, money-wise. But it's still, still, it's so stupid. So, anyways, he's the reason that, Sharon, that why Sharon got control of uh, the Masters and why she's been collecting royalties ever since for everybody, not just Bob. Bob gets a little cut. All of Lee's, all of the producer, all of Max Norman's royalties, boop, go to Sharon. All of uh, Randy's. Boop. Because Dolores felt guilty like it was blood money. So she's just been collecting all that. So that's how, you know. Anyway, so anyways. This other girl that I knew, she also worked at Jet. And she was a really good looking girl. And I won't even say a name or initials. That She just had an apartment that was right on the strip. Down though. In the better section. <laughs> and uh, one day I was there. Well, one day I was there and Tony was coming over. This is all when Tony was engaged to Tony Iommi, who was engaged to Lita Ford, so I thought, well, this is kind of, I don't know. but whatever. So, I'd wait. The first time I waited, I introduced myself, I got a guitar pick, because I didn't have anything that, you know, I'm like, I know this is a crazy thing, but do you have a guitar pick on you? He's like, I do. And I, that's how I got my Tony Iommi guitar pick. So... Uh, another time, I'm over there, I'm looking, and they had just put up the tribute billboard. You could see it from her window. And I'm like, whoa, I wonder what Randy would think. I mean, I wish he was, I'm sure he would wish that he was here to see it, but wonder what he would think. He's on Sunset, being held up by flabby Bob Bourne. 
not a big fan of Osborne after Sabbath. With Sabbath, he was great. After Sabbath, if it wasn't for Sharon, he would have been dead and a nobody. And you can see, and everybody's like, "Wow, he sounds so bad in these record." He was always wasted, always. And it was because a lot of things. He was an addict, and he had a massive drug and alcohol problem. And Sharon drank and did drugs too. See, she doesn't talk about that. She kind of talks about it, I guess, but I don't know because I really don't watch. I don't like to watch her talk. But anyways, she had. She knew that she either had. She had two stars. She was gonna either either gonna be Ozzy and Randy, or R Ozzy was gonna die, and she'd take Randy and, you know, push him, or whatever. She knew what she was doing, but she was there to babysit. She was at no time Ozzy's manager. The only time she got her hooks in is when she got control of the Masters, refused to give him back, and the debt that had occurred accrued from making all that crap his dad her dad just said fine it's yours and that's why she kept taking all the royalties to pay off everything and it paid off didn't it sure did so going back to now i'm looking out the window and so it's like march 19th or, or a couple days before uh because yeah because i just was getting ready to play the first show with trick or treat in 87 which is March 87. So I'm like, man, look at that. That's cool. So Tony was getting ready to drop by again. There's another famous drop. So she had to get in the shower and, you know, wash me off. And I had to just get out. <laughs> and so, you know, I'd call my ride. And uh, so I'd sit out, you know, stand out front and wait. He pulls up in his, uh, in his rolls. And uh, he's seen me before. Now he sees me again. He's like, hey, mate. And I'm like, hey, Tony. I go, hey, can I ask you a question? I didn't even remember this until this guy asked me this question last night. And I'm like, that's right. I did ask Tony about what did he think about uh, Randy. So you could clearly see, you know, and I knew he, he saw it. I'm like, uh, I got a question. I I was friends with Randy. I actually took a few lessons from him. You know, he grew up right down the street from me. Uh, what did you think of him? He goes, Oh, that that guy. He said that young kid really had something. He he scared me when I heard him play. Cause I've been thinking about what did he exactly say. And I, and I told the guy what I could remember, but as I have thought about it, he said, you know, that he really scared me because I, he, I realized this guy is playing my songs better than I'm playing them, for sure. And I haven't progressed at all, and this kid is, you know, way out in front of me. I go, so you think he's good did you ever meet him he goes I don't meet I don't think I've ever met him because I'm not on speaking terms with Oz I'm like oh I go but you think he's good I, he goes I, he makes me want to practice he makes me think I need to start practicing guitar I'm like wow cool it's like yeah I, I really I, I admired him I, I thought I thought damn Oz did it again. He found somebody, you know, and uh, he got another lease on life. And uh, there you go. That's basically what he said. And uh, I didn't want to hold him up because I knew he had a, a date, but I was trying to kind of give her time to, you know, shower and get herself ready. And you know. Hollywood, man. So... That's what he said. That's so. I did actually talk to uh, uh, Tony Iommi about Randy because several times I ran into him at that, you know, because of that situation. So there you go. There's your Ozzy and not Ozzy. Forget her Ozzy. Your Tony Iommi 
and Randy Rhodes' story, what he thought of Randy, that he really liked him, he thought the kid was great, it made him want to, you know, play, you know, practice more so he could, you know, be better. Because he says, I'm, I'm playing the same stuff I was playing in the 70s. You know, he said a lot of stuff. You know, and he's going, going on and on and on. And I'm looking at him like, man, this is freaking Tony Naomi <laughs> again. But, uh, yeah, he was really impressed with Randy. And he should have been. Because if you listen to, you know, the Aussie, the Black Sabbath stuff is great. And even when they play it still when they do children of the grave you know it's still the same and this is the this is exactly because i wanted one of the first couple of songs i wanted randy to teach me the first one was judas priest genocide the rhythm and then the second one was sabbath which is very ironic now isn't it and he goes oh sabbath you get and then he goes like this i go i go you don't like sabbath because my uncle you know turned me on to Sabbath. I was a kid still. I was like, what, 13, 12, 13, something like that. He goes, oh, well, everything I hear is this, this just like, bleh, 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 bleh. I go, well, Paranoid's a little upbeat. He goes, even the upbeat ones aren't even upbeat. I mean, they're not. Everything's just so plotty. I'm like, hmm. Huh. I'm like, plotty. He's like, you know, like plodding along. Blah, blah, blah. And he just do this. I'm like, that's cool. How do you play Sabbath, buddy, Sabbath? So he showed me. But if you listen to when he first started playing, he tried to stay kind of true to the tempo. But then by the time Tommy Aldrich is in the band, all bets were off because Randy was the leader of the band now. Ozzy never showed up for rehearsals or sound checks. So that's when Randy would that's when he put together the whole band thing and from what I can remember that kid telling me something about you know what's this man on the flying trapeze thing well it used to be Randy did a suicide solution he did his solo the end and then at the end the drummer would do they would do steal away and then they'd have a drum solo and it was two separate things. But then Randy turned it into a whole thing. He was mad at first because at first and because he wasn't being spotlighted. Like he wasn't, you know, and, you know, now we're gonna play a number featuring our guitarist, you know, guitarist Randy Rhodes and yay, yay, yay. And I actually have a recording of him in uh, England. Who is it where Ozzy goes, and now we're going to play a song featuring our guitarist, Randy Rhodes, who's also gay. And everybody starts laughing. And then he goes, Suicide Solution. And then Randy just rips into it. I got to freaking put that up because I haven't heard it on YouTube. And it's great. But it's an audience recording. And the guy keeps going, Yay! They go, oh, so annoying. But. The playing is unbelievable. So there you go. There, here's your guitar. Here's the light. It really only comes on when I'm shredding. So let's do a little shredding, and uh, I'm out. Right? And the way this is set up is volume, 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 tone. Volume, 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 tone. Volume, 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 tone. I hate it. I don't use those friggin' things. It should have just been volume, tone, who cares? Because these will never be touched. I've never played.